Okay, we're now all going to do this together. You're going to put your arm out. You're going to look at your finger. And now you're going to move your, fing your, your head back and forth. And as you rotate your head back and forth, does your finger stay uh, uh, in focus? Do you still see your finger in focus as you move your head here, as you move your head here? What's the answer? Yeah, it does stay in focus. Now I want you to do the same thing, but instead of moving your head, you're going to move your finger. So now you're looking at your finger and you move it back and forth. And does it stay in focus? Well, as you move it back and forth, it, it goes out of focus pretty darn rapidly. Okay, so that is the difference between a vestibular ocular and a what would be a visual ocular. We don't have a visual ocular reflex because, in fact, it's too slow. Why is the vestibular system the right system to use to stabilize gaze um, in, in opposition to head movements? Because the vestibular system is so fast. The vestibular system has, it shares the MET channel with uh, the cochlear hair cells. So this is a really fast ionotropic receptor. Just boom, the hinge opens up, the ions flow through and the cell is, depo in, and the cell is depolarized. Up in, in the retina, we have to have this whole G protein thing and there's like time for the cascade to happen and blah, blah, blah. So it's too slow. Um, okay, so that's why we use the vestibular system to, uh, to guide our eye movements in response to head movements. Now let's see how the VOR works. So first of all, um, what the, the, the outcome of the VOR is that the eyes are going to move in opposition to the head to keep, so the, uh, to the, so the effect of moving the eyes opposite to how the head moves is that gaze will stay steady. Gaze equals eyes plus head. Gaze is going to equal a steady line here. Okay? Every reaction, every movement of the head is opposed by a movement of the eyes. How does that work? Well, it turns out to be a disynaptic reflex. And here's the basics, and we'll go to the board to look at this more specifically. Here's the vestibulum uh, located in the inner ear. Information is carried in through the uh, eighth cranial nerve to the vestibular nuclei. There are four of them, but we don't care about the different ones. Um, so the vestibular nuclei is going to receive this information, and these vestibular nuclear neurons are going to make direct contact onto motor neurons. Motor neurons that sit in the oculomotor, the trochlear, and the abducens nuclei that then in turn uh, control an extraocular muscle. All right, so let's look at one. And again, obviously we're going to stay with our, our movement in the yaw plane. This is way more, uh, way simpler, not just because we have the horizontal canals, but now we have just the lateral rectus and the medial rectus. Okay, so let's say that we have a head movement in that direction. In order to keep gaze steady, we have to move the eyes in that direction. Right? In, to an equal, equal extent in the opposite direction. And we know that this head movement produces an excitation here and an inhibition here. We're going to just tr keep track of this excitation. This excitation is going to go in to the central nervous system, to a vestibular nuclear neuron, which is going to now go across the midline to abducens and excite a motor neuron in oculomotor, which then innervates this lateral rectus. Okay, so this is this is the brain, this is the midline. In the brain, we have one synapse, two synapses. So two synapses, a disynaptic reflex that takes us from excitation of the horizontal eye canal, uh, the horizontal, <laughs> horizontal vestibular canal, horizontal semicircular canal, 
all the way to the vestibular nucleus, to the abducens nucleus, uh, to the ocular motor nucleus. Oops. That's the edge of the brain. Um, and then back out to the lateral rectus. Okay? So now this lateral rectus is going to be excited. And in addition, these cells also, or another group of cells, are going to go up to uh, ocular motor on the same side. And this ocular motor on the same side, this cell is going to come over here and excite this medial rectus. And so you're going to get a leftward eye movement in response, I'm sorry, a le leftward eye movement in response to a rightward uh, rotation. That's the VR. That's all it is. Okay? So let's just go back over to the slides and see that again. So without, without my um, missteps here, here is information coming in from the horizontal canal through the vestibular afferents. It reaches the vestibular nuclei. There's, uh, there are cells that go across the midline very locally and reach the abducens nucleus on the opposite side to contract that lateral rectus and then also reach, other cells reach the oculomotor nucleus on the same size side to result in contracting this medial rectus on the same side. And this gives you a counterclockwise eye movement in response to a clockwise head rotation. Okay? That's as complicated as it is. So that's the bare bones of the VOR. Now, the one last point I'm going to make in this video is to tell you that there is a VOR for every single type of head movement. So there's not just a VOR for the simple case of, of moving your head back and forth in the yaw plane. There is a VOR for moving your head pitching forward. If you pitch down, you'll bring your eyes up. If you pitch up, you'll bring your eyes down. If you, um, and, and, and so the, the way to think about this is shown in, in the following diagram which you must remain calm to look at. Okay, so there's a reason we, we, we look at horizontal eye movements because they're way simpler, but the important point here is that every single canal, a, a movement in the direction of every single canal elicits a VOR to oppose it. So let's just take one example, the left anterior canal the left anterior canal is a half pitch forward, half roll to the left. It's this kind of a movement. And the eyes are going to go, are going to end up, from the VOR, are going to end up going up. And so that excites the left superior rectus and the right inferior oblique. For all movements except for horizontal eye movements, the pairs are one rectus and one oblique. Okay, on opposite sides. So now what we're going to do is, now that we understand how the VOR works, we're going to look at the most simple case of the VOR going wrong, the most simple case of nystagmus. <laughs>